Hi there. Thanks for joining us for Together. I'm Karen Lee. For the next 30 minutes, we're going to showcase the best of Colorado and the best of our community. The stories you're about to see feature people who are coming together for Colorado to make our state an even better place to live. This show is one the entire family can watch, so get ready to enjoy the good that's happening right next door. What I love about our Together for Colorado stories is how much it encourages most of us to give back. That was certainly the case after we aired a story this summer about RTD fare increases. Sounds straightforward enough, but that story ended up being life changing for one single mom. And as Jamie Leary explains, it's all thanks to a viewer. Ebony Buckner spends 20 hours a week commuting. I catch um, two buses to drop my baby off at daycare, two buses to get to my job, two buses to pick my baby up from daycare, and two buses to get us both back home. News of a possible fare increase had her worried. You know, you're just trying to make it. Even when you're trying to make it, it's hard. Anita Holland saw Ebony's story on CBS4 and wanted to help. And for me, it started with just wanting to get this lady a bus pass. But it turned into so much more. The lifelong bond these two now share. That's next on Together. Playing sports should not have to end when the sun sets. Well, luckily for kids in Commerce City, won't have to. As Dominic Garcia shows us, the community has come together to shine a little light on young athletes. The Suncor Boys and Girls Club in Commerce City is a home away from home for dozens of kids. Angel Armenta is one of them. I've been coming here for three years. He comes here for after school fun and to play on Pat Bowen Field outside. It's like fun experiences and stuff, like fun memories. But until today, the fun ended when it got dark. How these new stadium lights will help him and other kids in the community, that's later on Together. Well, for most people, Labor Day is a day to spend with your family, kind of the end of summer celebration. For the, but for the past five years, a group of dentists has given up that holiday. Mackenzie O'Keefe explains their labor of love. It's 5 a.m. on Labor Day. The early bird gets the worm. Hundreds of people are lined up outside a business in Wheat Ridge. So we got up at about 3 in the morning. All these people are waiting to get dental work done for free. I'm hoping to get a filling today because, you know, they're pretty expensive. We'll introduce you to the dentists donating their time to put smiles on people's faces. They're good people. That's coming up on Together. Coming Together for Colorado is all about supporting one another, especially through the tough times. Back in July, we interviewed a woman who was taking eight buses a day just to get around. Well, one of our viewers was so touched by Ebony Buckner's story, she wanted to help. And she's not the only one who decided to give back. Jamie Leary and photojournalist Robert Sanchez show us how the community truly came together to help her. For me, it started with just wanting to get this lady a bus pass. Anita and Ebony only recently met each other around the same time we did. We wanted to talk to someone about potential RTD fare hikes, and along came Ebony, a total chance encounter. I got off the bus with a bunch of people, and you chose me. <laughs> you chose me, and um, ever since then, doors just been opening up all type of blessings. The first was Anita. I think sometimes your heart is just drawn to somebody, and. I guess I just saw hers. She saw Ebony's story on CBS4 and wanted to help. You know, you're just trying to make it. Anita helped Ebony with her bus fare, but quickly realized her problems were much bigger. It's been two years that I've just been grabbing stuff out the luggage. Anita reached out to us. We reached out to the Butterfly Foundation. And one month later, the foundation took Ebony's case. They got her into a home, and we were there as they delivered brand new furniture. I could just sleep in peace now. I could finally rest because I, I haven't like slept and it's been some time. She also has time to be a mom and worry about things like opening Shamar's Otter Pops. Shamar? That's <laughs> what moms do. Shamar was so excited he could barely sit still. Finally, he has a place to call his own. There's no stimulations as to what he can't do. <laughs> Shamar, just do you. Just, you know, you're a kid. And because of the kindness of strangers, Life just got a little easier for one single mom. I just want to further my education um, and just be like the best mom that I can. That's like my only focus. Jamie Leary joins us now to talk a little bit more about Ebony. We just, we all loved her when you did that initial story. Oh. 
We, we heard her story, and gosh, it just struck at your heart, and, and you knew instantly that it was going to end up being more than just about buses. I feel like I say this is one of my favorites every time I come on this show, but it really was, and it was like such a chance encounter that we met this woman, and um, we were taken by her, and uh, you were, and so was one of our viewers, and that was the most important piece of this, is that our viewers were paying attention and loved her just as much as I did in the split few minutes that we were able to speak with Ebony. Um, and she noticed Ebony and she wanted to help her out. Mm -hmm. And so she did. Yeah, and yeah. then you reached out and got even more stuff going for her. So it goes so much further than that. This viewer helped her out and then she called me and she said, Jamie, you've got to know something. Ebony, um, Ebony doesn't have a home. We've got to do something. And, um, and so that's where the Butterfly Foundation comes into play. And you know the Butterfly Foundation. And they've helped us out with this story before, but um, I had forgotten to the extent that they are able to help sometimes. Yeah. And um, it's because of that viewer paying attention and the willingness of the Butterfly Foundation that this all came full circle. Mm -hmm. It was just incredible to it see. Is amazing, isn't it? This is really together for Colorado. It cannot get any better than this. And what, I know Ebony was crying in her story, but what was her reaction to all of this generosity? She's still overwhelmed. She's still completely overwhelmed. And um, we still talk, we still connect, and um, she still can't believe it. I think for her the most important thing is that she can sleep, yeah. which means she gets to be a better mom to Shamar. And that means Shamar gets to also do normal kid stuff. And um, Anita, the viewer, took it one step further, and she called... Um, she called this, this man that she knows who mentors young children. And so now Shamar has a, a mentor in his life, too, who takes him out and does like all, cool, all sorts of cool stuff. Jamie, I think it's safe to say this is just the beginning for this yes, family. Yes, absolutely, <laughs> so great. just the beginning. Yeah, thank you so yeah. much for sharing yeah. your story with thank us. You. We appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Well, nurses at University of Colorado Hospital come together to make a patient's dream come true. Linda Regis is a double lung transplant recipient who is a huge fan of Peyton Manning. Nurses worked with the former Broncos QB to give Linda a thrill of a lifetime. They had him surprise her while she was out taking pictures at the UC Health Training Center. All right, y'all keep smiling. Keep smiling here. It's Omaha. Omaha. That's right. This is an Omaha. I mean, that was just a dream, a bucket list dream that I never thought would come true. Ah, oh, and it sure did. Meeting Manning was not the end of that surprise, though. Linda also got tickets to this Sunday's game at Mile High, which will be her first NFL game ever. Well, speaking of the Broncos, they're coming together so kids can keep playing football. Pat Bolenfield sits outside the Suncor Boys and Girls Club in Commerce City. But when it gets dark, the game stopped, at least until now. As Dominic Garcia and photojournalist Steve Youngerman show us, the team is shining a little light on the kids so they can keep playing. This is Angel Armenta's second home. I just like hanging out with friends. Like, there's a ton of activities you can do here. Without the Boys and Girls Club, he says this shy guy would have never come out of his shell, much less be interviewed on TV. No, honestly not. <laughs> and it really helped me a lot. Yeah. Like with my social skills and everything. He is one of many kids who spends their afternoons at the Suncor Boys and Girls Club in Commerce City. We're in this club, like you get to meet people and you see the same people every day. And like you get to trust these people. Outside, they play on the club's Pat Bowen Field, and today they got a present from the Broncos and other sponsors. We started the clinic today by unveiling the brand new lighting that we have added to the Pat Bowen Field at the Suncor Boys and Girls Club. This field isn't just used by the club, it's open to the community, school district, and Boys and Girls Clubs across the city. A sports field is a hub in any community, and so by adding additional hours of play for these kids, we are bringing kids, you know, to the table, to the field, really, to make sure that they have the opportunity to be be successful in sports, in after school activities, and at the Boys and Girls Clubs. So These lights will allow us to go out and spend a, a higher amount of time being outside and playing around. Angel says it will truly make this place shine and hopefully attract some more kids to the club. I would truly recommend the club because you get to meet new people, you get to meet new experiences. You can open up a new site to you that you, you didn't even imagine existed. Beautiful Denver Public Schools teaching its youngest students the importance of fire safety. And it's about so much more than just stop, drop, and roll. How the Rockies are coming together to make sure this lesson is plenty of fun. Together with Karen Lee, sponsored by Canvas Credit Union. We're Canvas, and we've got you covered, Colorado. Go live.
The Colorado Rockies are coming together with Denver schools to teach kids a lesson in fire safety. On Tuesday, students at Palmer Elementary got to explore this fire safety house. It's a hands-on way for the kiddos to see what happens inside of a home during a fire. The alarms go off, the door gets warm, and the house starts to fill with smoke. Well, kids learned how to safely get out through a window and are taught the importance of having a family plan. Rocky's mascot, Dinger, and catcher Chris Ionetta were there for the fun. He says he's glad that he gets the kids excited about learning. You know, I was a kid just like this, and I remember, you know, people coming into our school and it being a fun event and, you know, being on the other side of it now, it's just a way to give back and a way to, way to kind of experience it from the other side. That's weird to think that, you know, I could have an impact on someone. So, you know, with that, it's just fun to be out here and it's fun to be able to give back. Well, the Hartford Fire Insurance Company hosted this event. It also donated $20,000 to Denver Public Schools for fire safety education. Always great to see, right? You need to learn, start learning that stuff early. It's very important. It looks like they were having an absolute blast. Got to have fun too, mm -hmm. right? All right, well, meteorologist Lauren Whitney joins us now. We know the kids are back in school, but that doesn't mean you know, the weather's been so awesome. We know that they're still having fun out, outside. Oh, yeah, lots of fun stuff going on. Let's take a look at some of our pictures that we have. This is from Steve Vriesman's family and friends. They were doing the hike to Cascade Falls. Have you ever done that? I haven't, and that looks spectacular. And he said it's just a stunning shot once you get to the end there. So definitely something that you should do if you haven't done it. And this is Billy Bob. You can see there having fun at Shadow Mountain Reservoir. There's still plenty of reservoir and lake time left to be had in Colorado. We have some warm temperatures coming up this weekend and next week. So. Karen, not a bad An idea. Indian summer, I think. Hopefully. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and taking a look at another picture. This is from Darren via Polando. And you can see that he's near Mount Beardstad. He said he hiked this uh, 14 er and he was very proud of himself there. A great picture. And I love this too. We were just talking about the Colorado Rockies. Jeff here at Coors Field. Uh, you can see they're smiling because they got to go down into the dugout. A rare treat to get to do that. Oh, super fun. Great. It's such a good time to be a Rockies fan. I know. Big <laughs> weekend coming up with the Dodgers. Yeah, it's got to be great. Mm -hmm. Lauren, we always appreciate that. And keep those pictures coming. We want to see you out enjoying Colorado with your family. So send us an email at togetherforcolorado at cbs.com. You can also post it on social media using the hashtag for Colorado. You can also email us directly and we will be sure to share it right here on the show. Coming together for Colorado's first responders, one restaurant chain wants them to know how much they matter. They delivered catered meals to our firefighters. Why this food is so much more than just free lunch. Olive Garden has been generous enough to stop by and give us lunch, which is super awesome. We really appreciate it. And this week's Together for Colorado Calendar on Thursday, it is the opening night reception for a new exhibit at the Museo de las Americas. Lockheed Martin worked with the museum for the STEM-focused artwork. On Saturday, enjoy a fun mud run at the annual Muckfest MS. Proceeds will help find a cure for multiple sclerosis. On Sunday, check out vintage cars in Denver's University Hills Plaza. You can find out more information on these events by visiting the Together for Colorado section of CBSDenver.com. Coming together for Colorado's first responders, Olive Garden has taken the time to say thank you. This Labor Day, the chain surprised firefighters from all over the Front Range with a catered lunch. And the restaurant wanted to show their appreciation to them for working the holiday. Well, we were there as the Aurora Fire Department enjoyed some spaghetti and meatballs. It's really nice to get recognized. We work 24-hour shifts. Um, sometimes we can be really busy, so it's nice to have somebody provide lunch for us. Olive Garden has been delivering these thank you meals for the past 17 years. and that time, the restaurant has served up more than 12,000 <laughs> lunches. First responders weren't the only ones working this Labor Day. Dozens of dentists gave up their holiday to come together for those in need. The employees at Rhesus Dental and Braces offered their talents for free. As Mackenzie O'Keefe and photojournalist Eddie Castro explained, it truly was a labor of love for these dentists. Before the sun even rose, the early bird gets the worm. People were lining up outside Rhesus Dental in Wheat Ridge to make their smiles a little brighter. Been having a, a toothache for for a week and a half now, and uh, the pain it's a, lo a little unbearable to even uh, enjoy simple foods like soups. The event Labor of Love gives people a chance to get a filling, their teeth cleaned, or an X-ray and exam for free because we all know going to the dentist can be expensive. 
as a college student, you know, money's pretty tight. <laughs> so we, we try to take every opportunity we get. We've got people that, have, that uh, have been suffering with a toothache for a year or two, didn't know this was possible. They come and they actually give us hugs and cry when they get the tooth finally out. As soon as the doors opened at 8 a.m., over 100 people filed in. While some wait months for this day, others like Lisa Ropers actually woke up to an emergency and is now thankful for the dentist's generosity. I was freaking out and I was crying because it fell off and then I saw the news story and I was like, okay, maybe I can get it fixed. <laughs> for the dentists themselves, it's a rewarding feeling. It makes everybody feel good. The teammates here feel good. The dentists feel good. The patients feel good. It's just a very rewarding day to give this service. Seeing those who need a little extra help. Because I didn't know uh, what to expect. You don't really get excited to come to the dentist. <laughs> but yeah, we're pretty excited to be here today. Walk out with a fresh and clean smile. They do a pretty good job. They're good people. I'm pretty thankful to, to the people that are actually working out uh, on the Labor Day where most people have the days off. So they're helping out the community. Sure are. Love all that gratitude. Well, the city of Federal Heights has its own hero, a public works employee, was just honored for saving a life. How he jumped into action to save a co-worker in distress. Catch the latest episodes of Together as well as your favorite Together for Colorado Stories anytime at CBSDenver.com. Two Federal Heights government employees have a bond that goes way beyond work. That's because Public Works employee Rodney Richmeyer saved co-worker Aaron Garcia's life. This week, Rodney was honored with the Citizens Life Saving Award. Here he is with the fire chief and the entire city council. Rodney was in a meeting when he noticed Aaron was choking. He immediately ran over and gave him the Heimlich maneuver. Aaron says Rodney has always been his partner at work, but now he considers him his lifesaver. Public art is a great way to bring people together, and you can see that for yourself in Greenwood Village. Just last week, the city unveiled this new mural at the Landmark. It was created by local artist Kelsey Montague. She's also done similar murals in Denver's Rhino Arts District. Montague says that her work is all about coming together. So show us how people are coming together where you live. We want to hear from you. So post it to Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram using the hashtag for Colorado, and I'll be sure to share right here on our show. I love hearing from all of you, especially when you give me your feedback. Jenny sent me this note and she says, you and the show provide a calm and uplifting start to Sunday morning in a world filled with chaos and uncertainty. Well, thank you, Jenny, for watching, and please keep the feedback coming. I'd love to hear from you, so you can email me directly or find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you for joining us on this week's episode of Together. We'll be back here again next week with even more stories of the wonderful people in our community who are coming together for Colorado. Until then, a special concert from the Colorado Symphony and Denver Young Artist Orchestra. This week, the musicians treated dialysis patients to private concerts at DeVita Center statewide. Photojournalist Tom Myers takes us to one of them.